Thank you, Stephanie Fernandez. We're going now to present and to talk about the food service and retail. Juan Martinez, a PhD, and Julio Ramirez, uh, that has made a career with Burger King Corporation for 26 years. Both are coming, and now you have the podium. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much. So um, I, I just noticed I've been set up because short, fat, and ugly that I am, I'm following a beautiful, smart young lady. But Helena knew what she was doing because what she did, she gave you double trouble. Two short, fat, and uglies together. Maybe we can make it a little better. <laughs> Not true. But our total will be seven minutes because we came from the fast food business. So. It doesn't, it doesn't have, it'll, it'll never happen. It'll never happen. Let, 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 me tell you, let, me, let me tell you why you need to pay attention to this presentation. Hay un dicho. No se un dicho. If not, I'm creating it. Si no hay jama, no hay nada. Okay? Pay attention. Right? We'll be, we'll be brief. We'll be brief. But the reality, the, the, the reason I asked Julio to join is because Julio is the foremost figure in food service in the Latin American community. Some of you may know it. I know a lot of you read the pamphlet, probably none of you. But he used to be president of Burger King Latin America. Uh, and, and finally, he was executive vice president of Burger King and uh, global operations. So if somebody knows food service, is Julio. So the questions at the end of this go to him. I'm just here to do the, the front end. So we're consultants now. We, we joined hands at Burger King many years ago. Uh, so now we get to do this, uh, this gig together. Let me, let me share, start by presenting some realities. You've already seen realities. I call them the good, the bad, and the ugly. Anybody watch that movie? Good, the bad, and the ugly. That's what we probably have in Cuba. And by the way, before I keep going, there used to be two Puerto Ricans here. Maurice Ferrez already left. I'm the other one left. So <laughs> anyhow, I, I had to say that. The good, right? High infrastructure development. There's a lot of stuff going to be going on in Cuba. Population would crave food concepts. If you don't believe it, go to Puerto Rico. The per capita restaurant in Puerto Rico, it's incredible. Highest average volume restaurants in Puerto Rico than anywhere else in the US. There's going to be food, right? Hama. Everybody wants Hama. High population growth. You know, it's been stagnant for so long, right? One percentage, ten percent, or whatever it is. And proximity to U.S. Those are, those are key goods, call them. The bad, right? Construction facilitation. I need not say any more, right? Uh, enough is said about that. Train works for it. I call it aptitude and attitude, right? Aptitude speaks of what you know. Attitude is a little bit more difficult, right? They probably have an attitude right now. It may not be a good one. You got to deal with it. Right? Food handling safety practices. You gotta, you gotta serve food that's safe. Otherwise, you know, we don't want a lot of people with uh, uh, stomach problems over there. And then product supply availability, right? But we'll work with Ryder, we'll work with uh, Mr. Perez to get the food in there, the buildings, and we'll, we'll get all that stuff. And the ugly. Nick's gonna resolve this in 30 days? <laughs> Maybe a little more than that. Maybe a little more than that, but I've got a solution. We come up with a solution. Crafty Julio and I came up with a solution that I want to share with you, a possibility, right? So operational format, right? Uh, clearly, we want involvement from the Cuban community because, and, and Julio said this, people cheer for the home team, right? Somehow you got to get that community involved because these darn Americans are coming in to take over, you just gotta get them involved somehow. Not sure how to do that with the aptitude and the attitude they have, but we'll work on that. You know, that's a challenge. I think somewhere along the way you need to have social and community support so people embrace the concept. You see what happens nowadays with all these restaurants that are in the, in the internet and tweeting and this and that and the other? It's all social. It's a very social economy, right? So somehow we're gonna have to figure that out along the way. Uh, and then I think, and this is Julio, Julio presented this uh, very, li very nicely, it's, you know, what's a franchise going to look like? I really not know. I mean, company restaurants, franchise companies, uh, we know somewhere along the island uh, with a hub somewhere, Havana, why not, right? We have to find a building that's not falling apart, but we'll put it in there somewhere. So the possible initial solution set, right? If I have a problem with real estate, what do I need to have? A mobile restaurant, right? Those of you who have seen them, this is a possibility. Until a real estate gets resolved, if Mohammed doesn't go to the mountain, the mountain goes to Mohammed, right? So that's a possibility to deal with the real estate. And, and uh, yeah, Julio one, and I. No, I was going to say one comment. Today, the fast food that does exist in Cuba, and it's been there for 25 years, 
are called Rapido. It's actually, they actually have a brand name. They're mobile units that sell hot dogs, chips, and some type of drink for a buck, a peso, whatever. So uh, it's not, it's not going to be new news to them. But I think until we solve things like real estate, we'll have to, it'll be a very fluid process. And, and importing everything, everything down to water, uh, may be a, a temporary solution as we work through it. But um, we have this and many other, many other options to talk about at some time. Clearly, there's going to be a demand, so that's not a problem. Cuba has pretty deep water ports, so we should be able to get ships in there with these trucks. These trucks don't have to be big. Uh, easier said than done. But it's, uh, again, indulge me in my, in my uh, reality here or not. Simplicity concept will rule. Hambake, give fry, and drink, right? That may go. Maybe put some pizza in there, a little bit of fried chicken. But keep it simple, stupid, right? Because otherwise, how do you execute? It'd be impossible to execute. For how long? Until the bad and the ugly gets resolved, right? Nick, at the end of it, I'm going to ask Nick that question, you know, how long will that be? So we can then plan our, our gig here, but, uh, you know, I don't know how long. That's just an idea. Other solutions, you know, clearly we need food safety training because it's critical for, for the food to be safe. Uh, catering systems, right? Taking the food to the people. A lot of companies nowadays do a lot of catering. Panera does a lot of catering. Chipotle does a lot of catering. Corner Bakery does a lot of catering. Um, Giardino Salads, who we happen to be involved with as, uh, as investors and owners, had, does a lot of catering. So take the, take the food to the people. Food commissaries. Right now we're talking a little bit more complicated as you're talking about infrastructure with building, with equipment. But food commissaries could also uh, help a little bit. All right, so somebody talked about how long the cars are going to last. So maybe delivery is not a good idea. I, I don't know. Car, foot, motorcycle, bicycle, how long will they care? I have. I really have no idea. But you know, delivery could be it. Yeah, we'll, we'll, see, we'll see what happens when we get there. But our mobile trucks are going to work. I guarantee you that. Right? That's the guarantee. Uh, we focus events on non-traditional marketing versus traditional. Eventually, that's going to change, uh, change a little bit. Eventually, you're going to have full-service restaurants, just like here. QSR, that's quick-serve restaurant, right? We have to say a little of that. Fast casual, like, like Panera, Chipotle, casual dine, fine dining. Now, a caution that I would give anyone that wants to embark on this mobile idea, which, by the way, we, Julio and I have already patented, and, and Nick is our lawyer, so you, know, <laughs> you can't steal this from us. Hey, it's just an idea. Um, you know, if you run a bad ambulante operation, you will mess up the brand. So when you build this building, nobody will show up. So there's a danger in going this route, right? If you're going to do it, do it right. Uh, otherwise, don't do it at all. Can I say about this? Yeah, let me get my glasses. Oh, on. no. <laughs> Good. Yeah, it's, uh, it's interesting, but, you know, rule of law is, is still in place in the trademarks. And so in 1997, Rick Silva, who was my attorney and today is the CEO of Checkers, Cuban American is the CEO of Checkers. Which and, and he's been undercover boss twice. Which we're, very, which we're very proud of. Did register Burger King and Whopper, and, and many other companies have done the same thing because at least uh, in a global world that still exists. Believe it or not, many, more than one company has tried to pirate uh, not, only, not only in the restaurant business, but in many other franchise businesses uh, have tried to, whether by design or by accident, have pirated company names that are used in the U.S. So, um, you know, this is something you got to think about as you get into, you know, this is more Nick, your stuff. But uh, I just thought it was interesting that we were able to register. We actually had someone that had something similar to Burger King. We were able to take care of that. It was an Italian company that had a name very similar to that with two or three stores, and, and we just bought them. <laughs> so, so we're able to get through that. So, so speaking of pirates, right, you know, how many new brands are going to show up in this uh, democratic Cuba, entrepreneurial-based Cuba? Lots of them, guaranteed, right? Some are going to look like Burger Kings and McDonald's and whatever it is. So a lot of them, right? And you'll see it. So Julio and I are ready for this, right? So you can't steal this idea. We're going to open Julitos and Juanitos Ambeguera, right? <laughs> We will take investors if you're interested, right? We will take investors. We've, we've even created a, a, a logo, right? Julio's and Juanitos and Beguera. Okay, so listen, just I said it at the beginning, I'm Puerto Rican, but you know, I'm very close to the Cubans. I've been married to a Cuban for, for many, many years. Uh, so there's a new language in Cuba, right? Aceri, right? Que se volá, 
right? You guys know what I'm talking about. You, you've heard it. So our slogan is going to be, I don't know if you can read it at the bottom, but it says, El mejor hambegue se acere aquí. <laughs> we'll take investors, by the way. Who wrote that? 